create a great life through what you do. Chapter 1. The Great Battles and Lies of Life. The Pure Truth of Life 1. Love what you do. Buddha said look within. Trust yourself. It took me until I was 28 to get over my capitalist pop culture religious indoctrination to live by my own standard. I still meet older men who feel deficient because they don't have a college degree or live in a mansion. What do you really need? Beyond modest comfort and health, a great life is to know how to be inspired all the time. That happens when you are accountable to your own natural standard. It's about how you feel as you live right now not about some fantasy capitalist goals you set for yourself because if and when you reach those goals, you will realize it's just a fantasy. Well-being comes from what you do all the time to honor yourself and feel good. I follow my own standard in life away from everything I was ever brainwashed by. You're as happy as you can be when you live by your true nature. It's about an inner sense you have about yourself on a continuum of self-respect and joy versus self-betrayal. Your inner voice which some people might call God is always telling you how you're feeling. How you feel is based on how much you do or don't earn your self-respect and joy today and also how much you do things that are contrary to who you really are or how much you do nothing at all therefore leaving your natural energy inside of you unused. I call this self-betrayal. Any minute of any day I know if I'm feeling good or bad because of the free spirit slash flow inside of me made up of. 1. I've earned self-respect by releasing most of my natural energy with love and gusto for the process. 2. I've released this energy and tapped into the higher reaches of the human spirit which happens when someone is engaged in intense aesthetic inspired spiritual pursuits. This gives me a freeing of my spirit a kind of joy that feels good that I can reach every day and feel good. 3. I am doing something from the artificial values of the world like following capitalist ambition which is not a part of my true nature. 4. I'm doing gluttonous things like sitting around eating, drinking alcohol, getting high, being entertained by stupid stuff on TV, etc. A little bit of gluttony is good but there is a line people cross into self-betrayal where they start to feel bad about themselves even if they don't know why. Enlightenment is a two-step process. 1. Discover your true nature which is who you were naturally born to be. 2. Honor it by living to release most of the natural energy inside of you day by day with love and intensity for the process. This will give you four things. A. Self-respect earned one day at a time. b. A constant state of well-being. c. Short bursts of euphoria and transcendence when you're fully engaging your life force which linger throughout the day to give you an extra high feeling of goodness and well-being. d. A sense of harmony, a feeling that you are honoring the God that created you by being the best possible specimen he made you to be. Your state of being slash mood ends when you go to sleep. It doesn't matter what you did today that makes you feel great or miserable, the next morning you start at a flat line again. This is why I know nothing from the outside world matters all that much, because I create my inner state of being through what I do and don't do. I live at an income level where I'm not desperately constantly worried about survival. If you live in poverty, you are always worried about getting by. In order to live a great life, you need a financial comfort zone where you have some leisure time to do what you want. I don't need much. I live modestly but I have enough money so I don't have to worry about being homeless anytime soon. An enlightened free spirit feels an overwhelming driving force to follow his or her true nature. If you got that sensibility inside of you, you're free to be yourself. You have freed yourself from the brainwash of the world, something very few people do even though virtually no one thinks they've been indoctrinated by their society. If you win the Grand Slam Super Bowl of the World Championship Wonderful Great Fantastic Human Being Contest and win a billion bucks in the lottery, the next morning when you wake up, your life is at a flat line again. Nothing creates euphoria but a constant release of the natural energy in your free spirit. If somebody loves you and slash or you love someone and you do great loving acts to each other and slash or have great sexual experiences, it's all gone tomorrow morning. You have to keep doing those loving and sexual actions day after day in order to keep the great intimate loving connection going at full throttle. 
there is no one point where you find your great soulmate, win great admiration from the world and get the big motherload of money where you have arrived and you will have a perma smile on your face and in your soul every day because quality of life, self-respect and sense of well-being are all fluid qualities, not static. You create your life every minute through what you do and think. Every day you have to repeat the process to earn your self-respect and well-being in order to feel that euphoria again. You have to keep honoring who you were born to be by releasing that natural energy from your free spirit to reach a standard you feel within yourself where you feel like you are a champion of your life living greatly. Do this every day until you die. When you turn it loose and come close to reaching your limits in expending yourself, you hit that magical feeling of freeing yourself from the generic mundanity of the human condition. If you don't do this regularly, you betray yourself. You end up a generic, pacified person with no natural joy on your face, no look of vitality in your body. Self-betrayal takes on two major components. 1. Most people betray themselves when they get sucked into the artificial values of the world rather than following their true natures. An artificial value is anything that is not inherent to you like capitalist ambition, religion, patriotism, pop culture entertainment, the idea of being cool as defined by society, buying into monogamy as the way to happiness which is society's idea thrust onto you, buying into the social sciences, the cult of celebrity, fashion, the mainstream news, political parties, etc. 2. Extreme self-betrayal is a person who doesn't even release energy following the artificial values of the world. An ambitious person following artificial values is at least doing something by working to make money or trying to be cool and trendy. A person who sits around doing nothing but absorbing pop culture entertainment and pursuing other types of frivolous excess like eating excessively, drinking alcohol, buying useless stuff, etc. has no foundation for self-respect within themselves. They live in self-contempt even though on face most pretend they're cool and in charge. Nobody fools me. I look at somebody and ask myself are they doing anything in life to earn their self-respect. I see past all of society's illusions of success, fame, coolness, and trendiness. There are a lot of lost souls in modern western society. Society is structured to market the idea to you that happiness comes from constantly buying new material things and new entertainment experiences. Our society tells us to constantly consume new stuff in order to be happy. See it on the ads everywhere blasting away. The problem with this line of thinking is that the human being becomes a bottomless pit who cannot be satisfied regardless of what they consume. For me, as an enlightened free spirit, the few things I enjoy doing are inexpensive or almost free. Physical activities, creative intellectual activities, sexual activities, loving activities, and practical activities as in gardening and cutting firewood cost almost nothing. I don't need much beyond answering the call of my soul to release my natural energy every day. One of the lies of grade school and the psychobabble industry is that you have worth just because you exist. People who do not make a conscious hard effort to honor who they were born to be by expressing their true natures intuitively know that they are not the people they want to be. They might not know why. There is a natural intuitive standard inside of everybody of who they were born to be. We all intuitively know whether we are proud of who we are even though most of us don't understand or know about this inner standard we have that guides us and talks to us through our inner voice. The winners of life answer to this standard by trying to meet it every day. Everybody else lives a confused life next to this because nothing in the world or in human consciousness anywhere matches an individual living by their true nature as the key to happiness. I wrote this book to tell all the depressed, miserable, brainwashed, lost souls out there that most of your negative feelings of worthlessness come from not knowing what your true nature is and consequently not releasing your natural energy every day. This is the cause of a lot of the misery in modern prosperous countries where people's main problem is not poverty but a feeling of existential emptiness. People feel alone then go to pieces when they don't have a deep intimate connection like the ones they see on TV which incidentally is a lot of fake stuff. Very few people get the intimacy and the connections with other people they want in life, particularly with a lover or mate but that's a story for my love book.
you have to realize that you spend most of your time alone in your own head no matter what, even if you have great lovers, relatives, friends, and pets. You are accountable to yourself for most of your happiness. You can get part of it through relationships but you always have to earn your own sense of self-worth through what you do which may be solitary or may involve other people. F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote The Great Gatsby to describe the empty lives that wealthy people lived by following frivolous pursuits day after day. I know about this because I went through a frivolous phase of material excess as a stupid young man trying to be cool and trendy as defined by my society. At one time, I had enough money to do whatever I wanted within reason. I went out drinking, doing drugs, trying to make the cool scene and all that stuff. It only took about six months before I realized something was seriously wrong. I wasn't created to eat processed foods for pleasure, drink alcohol, do drugs night after night and go out looking for some kind of action. I was looking to meet cool people, looking for easy sex and to meet some great woman to fall in love with. Now that I'm enlightened, I have the highest wisdom possible in the human condition so I don't need to go looking for the answers to life anymore. There are very few extremely strong-minded people out there. There are very few enlightened people out there. Strong will alone is not enough. You need wisdom too. Enlightenment is not enough because wisdom fades. You need the strong will to constantly live truly and purely. If you have a TV and an internet connection, that big pop culture media capitalist sales machine is coming at you all the time plus all the people around you are living in that headspace so you have to be strong enough to constantly say to yourself I live by my true nature and that's it. I don't care about the crap for sale by the world trying to get me to buy into all that meaningless, frivolous junk out there. As far as love goes, I've been in love several times when I was young until I realized I'm a hedonist, I'm horny all the time by nature. I will be true to myself and shoot off all those missiles every day as you can read about in my musings on love and sex in another book. The Pure Truth of Life 2. Stand Alone Without Illusions. Live true to yourself. When I was young and buying into the artificial values of the world, I had maybe 40 pair of pants, 40 shirts, and a bunch of junk I didn't need. I quickly realized that there is something wrong when anyone lives in material excess while we are all perfectly aware of all the poverty out there. The hidden rule of capitalism is that your value is your material worth. Loads of people buy into this game and perpetually feel like they don't measure up to the images of the winners on TV, in magazines, etc. with the mansions, the expensive cars, the expensive jewelry and all that stuff. My philosophy is that nobody deserves to live in material excess while there is so much pain, poverty and suffering in the world. Everybody is entitled to pursue the basic necessities which is a modest home and the basic comforts. Can you be a happy and good person if you live in material excess? Capitalism says if you earn it, you deserve it. You can flaunt it if you want. I say this is why the world is screwed, because of the greedy people trying to hoard as much as they can while some of the poor people who have nothing starve and die of basic medical diseases that cost a few dollars to cure. I believe that a lot of people in modern Western society live empty, mundane, miserable lives because they have bought into the capitalist machine sales pitch to constantly feed them new material goods and entertainment while not listening to the sense of inner accountability their creator slash God endowed them with. Should anybody spend three hours watching some sporting event when they could be doing something useful or inspired from the store of natural energy within themselves? What exactly does being a spectator of some entertainment event do for you? Does it give you a feeling of happiness, euphoria, or is it just brainwashed idiocy that wastes your time under the pretense that it's cool, happen and stuff? There is inner spiritual disharmony for me if I'm a passive spectator of anything and if I buy any frivolous material goods I don't need. I believe I'm listening to the inner accountability my creator put inside of me by living to release my natural energy for my own good and to help the world. A lot of people go for greed because it's advertised as the path to happiness and success. The natural law is to take what you need, not want in a frivolous, greedy way, and either share or leave the rest for others. 
I believe this is the big reason our capitalist pop culture societies are cesspools of empty-headed, selfish, mean-spirited people. We've been brainwashed to want the extreme materialistic, consumer spectator life we see on TV. When we don't get it, many people feel eternally jealous. They become mean-spirited. The rich people try to get worth by impressing others with big houses, big cars, etc. The poor people envy them. Brainwashed people want more stuff and want to be constantly entertained by the latest meaningless pop culture stuff. It never ends. The billionaire wants another billion dollars. Enlightened people don't need much. They live to release their natural energy day after day. That's it. I live by the primal creative aesthetic spiritual intellectual energy in my free spirit. I'm detached from consumer goods beyond what I need. I don't need to constantly be entertained by pop culture. I live to honor my true nature by releasing that natural energy inside of me. The only thing I need that I don't have is enough money to have lifetime financial security in modest comfort but I have the ability to earn it through what I do as I go along. We don't need much money beyond enough to live in basic comfort. After you figure out how to earn enough to do that, the focus should be to do what inspires you that comes from your free spirit. Sex and love are natural. They're both great if you can attract lovers and mates but partying, eating too much, doing frivolous things and buying meaningless material goods are evil to my way of thinking because they are not a part of my inherent true nature. I wasn't born to get pleasure out of eating a bucket of fried chicken or to buy some useless junk at the mall and think I'm cool, fashionable shit. I wasn't created to buy a big fancy red sports car and drive around town trying to give off the image I'm a cool, successful dude. I was born to be true to the natural power inside of my being. There is only one way to feel good all the time. Prove to yourself that you're tough, noble, and positive, doing something to either help yourself or the world every single day of your life. If you don't do this, you know deep inside you're betraying yourself somehow. Mild self-betrayal is where you're doing all right because you're paying your way, releasing artificial energy you got sucked into doing by the world even though you feel a gnawing sense of emptiness that something is not quite right in your life. When I was a moderately successful capitalist, I used to do my job, drive a sports car, have a lot of clothes and junk, work out hard at the gym and catch a buzz with my buddies several nights a week. I remember I was at a supermarket once buying some expensive health food. I was thinking to myself what am I doing buying this phony yuppie crap? Something is wrong. I'm still not happy. I'm still not feeling like my life is naturally at ease, like I'm doing what I was born to do. I was living by image over soul, buying into society's bullshit over what was in my free spirit. That's why nobody impresses me now when they try to pretend they're so successful by the standards of the world because I know the only righteous life is to live true to yourself every day. Extreme self-betrayal would be a couch potato who does not release much energy at all but just sits there wallowing in gluttony and self-contempt. I've identified the major natural energies from my true nature slash soul that I live to release all the time. This is the key to happiness and well-being in people. 1 inspired energy, for me this physical and creative intellectual energy. You have to discover what you naturally love to do then spend most of your days engaged in them. This is the only way to feel good all the time. It's great if you can figure out a way to earn a living from it but even if you can't, this is the foundation for whatever happiness and exhilaration you get out of your life day by day. 2. Loving energy, most people want to be loved and give love. Love is naturally a strong emotion. It doesn't take up much time during the day to embrace and be intimate with your loved ones including pets unless you have determined that a big part of your true nature slash identity is to help the poor, downtrodden, exploited and abused people of the world in some way in which case this act of love is also a part of your natural inspired energy. 3. Sexual energy, you have to release your sexual energy even if you're by yourself. Unfulfilled horniness causes misery. It's a great unsung tragedy within the human race. 
people still feel ashamed of admitting they masturbate which is kind of funny to me since I know anybody that doesn't do it must be an idiot for depriving themselves of all that pleasure. It is the biggest recreational activity on the planet. Within the human race, the number of orgasms attained through masturbation is much higher than the number of orgasms attained through sex with other people. 4. Minor relaxation, entertainment, hedonistic fun, what you do to unwind and relax at the end of the day. I catch a buzz now and then. I watch a bit of TV but that's about it. I love my creative intellectual work so much that I'll often do it right until I go to bed. That's what being inspired about your life is. You don't care about the minor entertainment and material things other people are into to try to fill up their empty lives. 5. Practical energy, there are things everybody must do for basic survival, the most important of which is to earn a living. The happiest are the people who earn money by doing what naturally inspires them anyway. Figure out a way to do something that other people find useful that they will pay for from what you do anyway out of your love for your life. Everybody has to do basic practical things just to get through the day like eat, clean, wash yourself, go to the bathroom, get wood for the fire if you have a wood stove in a cold climate, pick your vegetables, get gas, buy food, pay bills, etc. The happiest people are active people running with their lives in a kind of urgent fun race to do things. Happy people are people doing things. Earn your self-respect to be happy. I was a naive, young guy looking for answers to life out there. At the end of my quest, I figured it out. Know what my true identity is and keep it strong by constantly doing the few things I really, really like to do all the time. Nobody can be happy unless they live like this. They could be comfortable, cozy, and delusional about their importance or status out in the world but as far as living a great life goes, you have to set your spirit soaring on high by releasing the natural energy in your soul to an intense level every day. If you don't live like this, you ain't got that elusive joy of life that only a few people ever feel and ride for most of their time on earth. You can be sociable, friendly, funny, and loving without selling your soul to the marketing machine. Just don't go there. Make it clear to your friends, acquaintances, intimates, and strangers that you're who you are right here, right now, the way your God created you, not a pop culture, socioeconomic elitist clone trying to live by some stupid image you got from out there somewhere. I'm polite and friendly but since I don't live like most people buying into the capitalist, mass media mindset, there's no kindred spirit connection between me and most of the people I come across. I am what I am. My allegiance in life is to follow the spirit inside of me. If I release the natural energy I was endowed with, I'm always connected to whatever created me. I'm in harmony with myself. To me, life in modern society is like the fairy tale The Emperor's New Clothes. The new clothes represent the fake, artificial world of image and ideas the world puts out to try to snare people into buying into this limited materialistic, spectator, socio-economic status view of life they're selling, complete with a fake special feeling called glamour that you supposedly get if you get all dressed up and walk down some red carpet. If it doesn't free your soul for a while, it can't give you a special feeling. That's how you can tell if anything greatly enhances a person's experience of the human condition or if it's just something done for image, to make some scene to give someone the delusion they're living high. Any car, no matter how shiny and cool, is still a piece of tin. It cannot help you release the natural energy in your free spirit to set it soaring on high for a little while so it doesn't really mean much beyond a functional tool of transportation despite all the status and image of coolness people try to get out of their cars. Most people are trying to live by the mindset portrayed through the mass media and other big institutions like the church, the government, and formal schooling while there are a few people off to the side looking at it, realizing that's not what they truly feel which is why I said to myself screw all that crap, I'm gonna follow myself. I don't have to be a serf. I don't want to have power over other people. I just wanna live my life and be myself without getting caught up in all the politics of the world and the status games people play. What is the purpose of life except to manifest or create the person you were born with the potential to be, not just in the positive, 
corny, humanistic sense of the psychobabble term called self-actualization but in the free-spirited multicolored, psychedelic sense. I'm naturally inspired but I'm also a hedonist who likes pleasure and I'm a lover too. I express my love greatly and freely for the few people and pets I'm in love with. I have explored my dark side to see what was in there, to see how low, degraded and decadent I got by following my primal side while neglecting my more noble, inspired side. That's how I learned what inner harmony is and what happens when you lose it. Total hedonism leads to self-betrayal and loss of self. Feeling good all the time does not come from overindulgence, decadence, or the total pursuit of carnal pleasure. You have to act in such a way that you're always in harmony with the true nature in your soul. What this means in plain English is that you have to honor who you believe yourself to be by releasing most of your natural energy every day in all its facets, the inspired, the loving, the sensual and the hedonistic. You have to be true to yourself. The warm, cozy feelings you get when you're intimate and close with your family and friends aren't enough. Money and material things aren't enough because they're inanimate objects. You can only sit in one chair in one room, watch one TV and drive one car at a time. Having bigger things and multiples of things doesn't do anything to qualitatively lift you to a higher state of consciousness. You can't feel aesthetic spiritual joy just because you're around material things or have lots of money. I run my life like a surfer rides a wave. I gotta ride it, that's what makes me feel really good and earns me my self-respect. I release that flow of energy coursing through my veins all the time. Every time I've done a good continuous stream of the few activities I love to do, I feel great. If I release a good bulk of my natural inspired energy on any given day, I've earned the right to do something hedonistic and sensual totally for pleasure for a little while but if I just live to constantly look for the next moment of pleasure through food, sex, drugs, romance, passive entertainment, consumer goods, etc., I'll be out of harmony with myself because I'm not purging my natural inspired energy. This is why most people feel some sense of emptiness. They don't release their natural energy. Through monitoring myself as a young man, I figured out that if I lived to always be looking to buy something new to consume and relished in a lot of the pop culture entertainment marketed at me, I wasn't happy even though this is what most people think is the key to happiness. I realized it quickly led to self-contempt because I wasn't honoring who I was born with the potential to be by neglecting the power I felt deep inside of me. I was hanging around with my friends drink and booze, doing drugs and aimless things looking for some kind of thrill, action, adventure, friendship, and a sense of belonging to a tribe or community. The capitalist ideology taught me to go out and get everything I could, all the material stuff I wanted, all the experiences out there for sale and travel to as many places as I could to see them because that's considered happiness and success by capitalist standards so I did it all, looking for a permanent good feeling, a sense of inner fulfillment that stayed with me forever. I got tired of traveling and doing everything else from out in the world because after a while, it was just the same thing repeated over again in a slightly different form. I was still the same person in my head, in my state of consciousness. None of it touched my spirit. It was just stuff from the world that marketers advertised as the bomb but it all meant almost nothing to me except for minor entertainment when I'm resting in my downtime at the end of the day. Nobody fools me. Nobody knows what anybody else is really thinking but you can easily tell how people are living by looking at them. After about 30 years old, the imprint of the way you live starts to show permanently on your face and body. The emotions you feel most of the time are right there for all to see. Your body reveals how vital, strong, harmonious, and peaceful you are. It's very easy to figure out how happy and vital other people are away from their symbols of societal status and wealth simply by looking at them. That's why I don't listen much to what people say. There's a lot of self-delusion and bull going around. I can usually tell who's really enjoying their lives and who isn't. This is enlightenment and freedom, to see yourself and the world as they really are away from all the delusions and bull. Even though it seems really simple, a lot of people will never find enlightenment nor freedom. I figured out that there were only a few things I really loved to do, 
mostly physical activities, creative intellectual pursuits, sharing my life with my few intimates, getting high on coke and wine, dancing when I'm high and the exploration of euphoric states of consciousness. By monitoring my life day by day, I eventually realized that if I purged most of the natural energy inside of me on any given day, I always felt anywhere from good to great. If I didn't, I would start to feel generic and mundane. This would progress to empty and out of harmony with myself the longer I went without releasing my natural inspired energy which is made up of physical activities and creative intellectual pursuits. Most people get so brainwashed that they never figure out that a great life is about following your true nature not the artificial values the world system indoctrinates most people with. I live by my true nature, the way I see myself and want to be, a physically vital man who thinks his own thoughts and does not allow himself to get polluted by the massive marketing machine of the world. I live by my natural inner standard. I'm only happy when I'm close to it and I'm only close to it if I spend most of every day doing those few activities I feel I must do. Hedonism, the sensual pleasures and abandonment to meaningless euphoria are all great as part of a full life but not all the time because everybody has a natural sense of accountability inside of themselves. The only way you can possibly ever be happy is to live by it. The simplest way to describe my inner sense of accountability is intuitively how good I feel. If I feel really good, it's because I've worked hard at releasing the natural energy in my free spirit. Some people never figure it out. They spend their entire lives looking for something out there through entertainment, social functions, other people, career success, the pursuit of money and status, trying to look cool to others, new age fulfillment, religious salvation, etc., and don't realize it's about creating themselves as to who they want to be day by day. This is why we live in the land of lost souls. Modern society has taken us out of our natural element near nature to sit in houses watching screens, being indoctrinated by everybody talking at us through those screens and the brainwashed people around us, most of whom are clones of the artificial values of the world, so it's rare to meet true individuals smart enough to separate themselves from all this stuff to try to live true to who they really are. Look around. You soon realize that almost everybody is brainwashed by something that originates outside of themselves. That's why I'm going along, living the best life I can for me, not wasting my time on that massive world marketing machine out there. How do you touch the divine? What's your natural life force, your true state of being and your inner sense of dignity? You touch the divinity inside when you release them. It's not enough to try to be a successful one-dimensional clone in the world of business and careers as defined by society's standards. There's you alone with a great imagination and your own personal ideas and standards inside of you. The only people who reach enlightenment and a free state of mind are the few who wipe the slate clean from all their formative indoctrination then separate who they are as pure individuals away from everything they've been brought up to believe in that means success and happiness to redefine themselves by their true natures. The purpose of my life is to feel anywhere from good to great every day, to hit anywhere from a home run to a grand slam in my experience of the human condition. I do that through an intense release of the natural energy in my soul in all its facets. It's the only thing that really makes me feel high on a sustained basis. I can ride that euphoric feeling all the time as long as I honor myself by giving good effort in purging what I feel that's inspired, aesthetic, loving and sensual inside of me to a worthy level like I mean it, with intensity. A lot of other things in the world are fun like alcohol, chocolate, mind-altering substances, material comforts, religion, music, junk food, TV, movies, cartoons, video games, romance novels, trashy women's magazines, sex for sale and a few other things but none of them can make you feel great all the time. If you want to live every day as a celebration of the beauty of your life, you have to run with it, always releasing that natural energy within your being with joy for the process. The people who do this are the only really happy ones. Nobody else comes close. I live to release the natural energy in my spirit for the spiritual aesthetic adrenaline rush and to prove to myself that I got game, that I still got a strong spring in my step. I do this every day. I never miss, never ever.
there has to always be some uncertainty as to whether I can do something I deem tough, inspired, aesthetically pleasing and worthwhile otherwise if it's just a routine endeavor, it's a waste of time and energy to do something that doesn't do anything for me in releasing my spirit and making me feel high on life. If you've ever seen a great showman or performer in any endeavor, they'll tell you it's never a routine performance. It can't be. They have too much self-respect and sense of inner accountability to ever not go all out and rise to the occasion. That's why all those creative types keep working out in the public realm long after they've made much more money than they'll ever need. They get the rush of creating their lives as they live them you can't get anywhere else, when you're doing something tough that takes great inspired effort in front of others. It can't be a cakewalk. This is why all that capitalist marketing about happiness being the pursuit of passive relaxation and luxury consumer products is a big, fat advertising lie. Playing golf at retirement is like being put out to pasture to chew your cud. The happiest people are wise enough to know you don't stop doing what you love just because you reach a certain age. Happiness is the result of doing tough, inspiring, invigorating things regardless of how old you are. If I'm feeling pretty good, I have to push it to reach my standards. If I'm feeling really good, I have to hit a grand slam in my experience of the human condition today. I owe it to myself. I must. When I give superhuman effort to try to outdo my regular ability in something I love to do, the end result is always the same. I feel great, high on life. I feel like I just did justice to the great spirit of the cosmos that created me. I feel united with the primal noble divine force inside of me. It's like Michelangelo's painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, Adam trying to touch God. I get to touch the divine force of the universe flowing through my veins for a while pretty well every day but then it goes away when I go to sleep and I have to try to recreate it again tomorrow. There's no better way to live than this. Nobody can match this lifestyle except for people who live by it. Everybody else is stuck at gluttony and sloth to try to make themselves feel good and bring up their mood a notch for a minute, filling themselves up with food, alcohol, drugs, and consumer goods then sitting in front of a screen, hanging out with aimless people or playing with some frivolous gadget to try to get some good, cozy feeling through passive entertainment. Feeling really, really great only comes when you're proud of something you've done. You'll never get it watching other people do things. That's why pop culture entertainment and professional sports are a wasteland for lost souls as far as I'm concerned. I call them the big soul destroyers which have turned modern western society into a bunch of spectator wimps. I don't care if it's the greatest musician, the latest sitcom, the big game or the greatest so-called inspirational speaker in the world. Nothing anyone does that you watch can do anything for you that beats you going all out in releasing whatever passion lives in your free spirit. The gods or the monotheistic god put power inside of me today for one reason, I must honor who they or he made me to be for this one day. I must release all that energy inside of me then do what inspires me and makes me feel good tomorrow that releases most of the energy in my free spirit. Most people don't get it. They live as pacified spectator consumers and think this is great because the marketing heads on TV told them to buy video games, watch professional sports, eat junk food, color your hair, follow that phony field called fashion and pretend it's off the hook, cool, happen and stuff. Then they wonder why they feel like their lives are a flat line. I can almost always tell who's got a strong vital spark and who doesn't. Just look somebody straight in the eye. You can see the imprint of the life they've lived so far in their face. Not many people really love living their lives as a glorious experience of purging all the natural energy inside of them. Comfort does not equal euphoria. That's why society is screwed. We got hundreds of home improvement and home decor stores around. What does all that crap do for anyone? It's marketing brainwash to get you to think that decorating your home is important and means something but it means nothing next to living an active, inspired, sensuous, loving life. What do I care as long as the walls are solid and I got a bed, a table, and a fridge? Human nature starts at self-centered. Can you be who you really are away from cultural brainwash? 
what is the purpose of life after you get past all that indoctrinated stuff about helping people live better lives that you'll see everyone on TV say when asked about what the purpose of their lives are, especially beauty pageant contestants which is blatant hypocrisy because if you were truly good-hearted you would not engage in such a frivolous, vain venture, you'd be spending your time helping people get through all the pain and suffering out there. Everybody claims to aspire to love others and help the world but if this was really true, there would be no crime, we wouldn't live in houses bigger than we need, they wouldn't be full of frivolous material things, we wouldn't waste money coloring our hair, we wouldn't be overweight as a society and there would be no poverty and homelessness anymore because there's enough to go around for everybody if we shared it rather than getting all we can for ourselves. They say that about 70% of all the people in the modern Western nations are overweight. This implies that you've taken more than you need and eaten it while somebody somewhere is starving. Dante called it gluttony, one of his seven deadly sins which goes right alongside with sloth, laziness, another deadly sin reminiscent of people obsessed with being constantly entertained by passively sitting around watching a screen, reading a frivolous story or playing with some gadget that serves no useful function. Nobody fools me. People in general are very delusional. They think they're kinder, warmer, and morally better than they actually are. Most people sit in their comfortable homes, pampering themselves with food, alcohol, pop culture entertainment and consumer goods they don't need while deluding themselves into thinking they're good, kind people. On the good to evil 100 point scale, I'd say that most people start at self-centered which is at 50 which I believe to be the natural state of humanity, to care about your own self-preservation, comfort, and enjoyment before you care about others. We learn to be charming and act pro-social out in public but in our hearts, if we want to be free, we must accept who we really are and what we really feel without putting a fake greeting card commercial over our true natures. That's why I don't have the illusions you can read about in most psychobabble, New Age and Religious Inspirational Books. They're not real. It's fake gloss which is why all that so-called wisdom never ends up helping anyone. It might give them a brief shot of inspiration and hope but that's gone after a few days when our instincts rule us again. That's why the only way to enjoy your life is to know what your true instincts are and honor them. Except for truly cruel, evil people and a few saints, most people spend most of their time between self-centered and selfish, 50 to 75 on the morality scale. A few are really evil, near 100 and a few are saints near zero. This is why I don't buy into society's religious delusions, the new age come shtick or the ideology that career or business status and material wealth equate to a progressively higher moral standard. Everybody is as primal as I am. I don't care who you are priest, politician, or doctor. You live in the same hedonistic fantasy land I do in the privacy of your own mind. I'm free to be myself, see myself as I really am and live that way in my own hedonistic self-centered noble bliss according to my own standards. My only rule is don't hurt other living things. After that, I don't have to fake it that I'm a one-dimensional conformist, pro-social clone as most people do behind their true self-centered natures. No man is different than me in the privacy of his mind but that's a matter reserved for my love and sex book. I'm free enough to know how self-centered I am yet wise enough to know I must do something useful in helping others both to net me enough money to live freely and to attract the friendship, love, and casual companions I want. People wonder why they feel empty. Release the natural energy in your soul to always feel good. People feel empty because they don't follow their free spirits. There are plenty of people who live in poverty and are always struggling to get the basic survival needs. This is a tragedy in and of itself in a world of abundance where we have excessively wealthy people in one part of town and people barely getting by in the other part but that's not what this book is about. I'm talking about why middle to upper class people in the most affluent society in the history of mankind are not happy in a pure, glorious kind of way living to experience the limits of the human condition which most of us could if we wanted to but we don't. There is a state of comfort and complacency where a person feels alright if they have the basic comfortable material things, good food, good entertainment, and some people and pets to be with. 
This can make anyone feel cozy for a while but it's not enough simply because in our inherent essences otherwise known as our souls, there's an inner voice always telling us what to do. You could call it instinct if you want, I call it my true identity. I've been through enough of the material comforts, pop culture entertainment, the so-called glitz and glamour, exotic places, and career accolades the world has to offer to know that at the end of it all, it was still just little ol me alone in my head, asking myself what is gonna make me happy right now and every day for the rest of my life. I figured it out over a period of free living away from modern civilization for about six months or so. I was able to peel off all my former cultural indoctrination to make the greatest discovery of my life, I have an inherent standard inside of me of how I should live and who I should be that's who I am purely and naturally. It has nothing to do with the so-called civilized world I was brought up to believe in. I have my own conscience and my own values given to me by the great creator Godhead Divine Kumbaya Ganeshala Spirit who created me. We're all born with natural inclinations, tendencies, talents, or gifts. It doesn't matter what you call them. These tendencies translate to a certain amount of natural potential energy every morning when you wake up. It's there. Most of us deny it or ignore it because there's a big layer of artificial cultural conditioning in our brains that's clouding over our real truths as individuals. People who eventually discover enlightenment and freedom at some point in their lives realize that life is reduced to this one simple thing, I must release most of that natural potential energy I feel in my free spirit every morning when I wake up. This is the only way you're ever gonna feel anywhere from good to great every single day of your life. Just honor who you were born to be. Leave the artificial values of the world behind, focus on the power in your core genetic seed. If you don't release most of the natural potential energy within yourself on any given day, you're betraying yourself therefore you will feel out of harmony with your true nature. This is what that vague, empty feeling is that I used to have when I was unenlightened, even when I had plenty of money and was doing all right by society's standards as a yuppie. I didn't know why I never felt quite right back then but now I know it was the result of not living by my true nature. Many of us are so weak as individuals that we don't follow the song, dance, truth, or beauty in our souls. Most of us have been massively brainwashed by the artificial values of this world we live in. All the psychobabble, philosophy, religious and new age ideologies written since the beginning of human thought seem to try to make life more complicated than it really is. This damages all the people looking for enlightenment who buy into some of this artificial crap which covers over their real selves and smothers it. All you have to do is connect with who you are the way you were born away from the brainwash of the world and release that natural energy every day. The happiest people are the ones who live to constantly purge what's in their free spirits, whatever is in there that's inspired, beautiful, noble, ugly, angry, sad, sensual, carnal and loving. The only rule is don't hurt other living things. Following your true nature should be the great adventure of everyone's life. There are the people getting a kick out of being alive and everybody else living in some manner of pacified, consumer spectator comfort food, pill poppin', addicted to something, mundane land. The package deal of life might not fit you. I freed myself from the bondage of my cultural indoctrination which is so strong that most people buy into it and never discover their true identities. The purpose of life is to create the person you feel you were born to be freely away from cultural brainwash. I was 18 or 19 at a military academy, trying to become a professional military officer which meant nothing to me deep down inside. The only thing I knew for sure is that I wanted to succeed in life according to the standards of success put forth by the capitalist society I lived in. I went to a 20th century literature class with only two students in it because everyone else was more interested in the practical business courses. Over a period of a couple of months we read the novel Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce watching how Stephen Dedalus questioned the big institutions in his Irish society, peeling them all away one by one until he freed himself from the influences of everything he was ever brought up to believe in. He realized that his life was about the pure him alone. It was about having the guts, the freedom, and the beauty to live his life his way according to his standards. That was the awakening of Stephen Dedalus, 
to see life as a free-spirited, creative adventure. This should be what enlightenment is about, to make you realize your life is a constant adventure of finite time. You should be free enough to do what you want as opposed to letting yourself get brainwashed by the forces of the world that define happiness and success for you. In the novel, Stephen Dedulu says to Davin, the Irish patriot, When the soul of a man is born in this country, there are nets flung at it to hold it back from flying. You talk to me of nationality, language, religion. I shall try to fly by these nets. All the forces of the mainstream establishment have a vested interest in creating a pacified, obedient citizenry who quietly work a job, consume lots of products and take on responsibilities that may not be inherent to them such as monogamy, marriage and having children which, at the very least, is not inherent to the male human spirit nor is it the universal key to happiness. Many people span the spectrum from asexual to polyamorous in their relationship preferences. There's no law etched in stone that says we're naturally maternalistic or paternalistic. This is the package deal of life we've been sold. A lot of people fall for it even when deep down inside they know it's not a part of their true nature. Millions of people take on traditional careers, get married, and have children even though in their heart of hearts, they know that this is very far away from the visions they have in their souls of what they want to do with their lives. It's evident in all the unhappy people stuck in the rat race, all the divorces, the many incompetent parents and estranged children walking around everywhere you look. Why? Because people got sucked into following a lifestyle not inherent to them. After taking care of your practical needs, life should be about living to feel, experience and release your spirit. Manifest the full experience of your version of the human spirit. That's what I feel. That's what I want so I do it. The strength of your spirit directly parallels your ability to be a great romantic lover and a sexual dynamo if that's what you want. If you don't live for the thrill of life you feel inside of you, you can't be happy. Everything else claiming to be wisdom about the human condition is the verbal diarrhea of the world, a bunch of hype created by phony intellectuals in ivory towers and white lab coats pretending they know something deep and advanced about the human condition in order to sell their books, tapes, workshops, seminars, phony cures for psychobabble diseases, etc. Just watch the current mainstream TV talk shows. They're all trying to sell you on the capitalist view of life, materialism is the key to happiness, families make great consumers, which is millions of miles from who you really are in your free spirit but they got the media exposure and Marshall McLuhan said the medium is the message meaning that they're brainwashing millions of people to follow artificial rules of life not inherent to who they really are but it doesn't really matter because it's all about selling stuff. That's what makes our economies and media networks run. They're selling books and tapes that don't mean anything after you buy them because they're all capitalist bull geared to sell product with hype and that's it. If you don't release the power you feel flowing through your veins on any given day, it's a wasted day. You betrayed yourself for that day. It's about what you believe in and want, not what the rest of the world says. Nothing can compete with an intense release of one's free spirit for cleaning all the cobwebs out of one's mind and soul so you feel like you're riding on air for a while. Anybody who unleashes the power they feel within themselves with joy for the process knows what I'm talking about. You freed yourself from the mundanity of the human condition. If you do this all the time, every day then you're one of the few free, enlightened people on the planet tapped into this higher state of being that feels a lot better than life at average, normal consciousness. Some people feel inspired and vital all the time. If you can figure out how to do this for yourself then have the fortitude to live by it, you belong to a rare breed of human being. They can try to dissect the human being down into all that foolishness they want in all them psychology journals but the greatest life possible comes down to the people releasing their spirits every day to feel high and good. Everybody else could easily erase most of their problems and anxieties if they lived for spirit. It's a sad commentary on life in modern western society. We got all these forces like capitalist ambition, material excess, the traditional work ethic, the social sciences, the self-help industry, 
New Age ideas, religion, government propaganda and even pop culture entertainment all telling us how to think, how to live and what to do. Plain and simple, I believe that most of the mental and medical problems people have in modern society is a direct result of not following their true natures, not releasing the natural energy in their free spirits. We have created passive consumeristic spectator lifestyles for ourselves where we're always looking to be entertained by something outside of us rather than actively living original lives by doing what's inside of us. On top of that, most people don't really feel good in the emotional sense in their daily mood because they don't do anything to earn their sense of self-respect and well-being by releasing their natural energy. If you don't do anything that makes you feel inspired and euphoric, how can you possibly feel anywhere from good to great about your life? It's a big joke to me when people don't do anything intense to set their spirit free yet they think they're feeling great. Comfortably numb is not the same as releasing your free spirit through doing something from your core being. We got faked out by the world system. If we had lived 7000 years alongside Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and the native red man running free in the Americas, it would have been just us alone with our thoughts, feelings, and intuition given to us by the Creator God Alaganesh Buddha Spirit of the Universe who created us. The Creator God made each of us with a true, pure nature. We were made to spend several hours a day in vigorous physical motion, hunting and gathering food, building shelters, protecting ourselves from wild animals, feeling our vitality flowing through our veins. Our Creator gave us brains so we could think for ourselves, analyze our experiences, create ideas, try them out and keep experimenting to try to live better lives. This is our true nature, to be physically active, to create our lives through what we think and do, to seek sensual pleasure and love by following our instincts and emotions. Back in the day up until about a hundred years ago in colonial America, you lived by following what you felt in your free spirit. You had nothing censoring you or holding you back, except for religion, telling you to follow rules and paradigms not inherent to you. You did not have the mass media, grade school, or government indoctrination filling you up with all kinds of ideas that separated you from your true nature. The power of indoctrination by this artificial world system we're currently living in is massive. There's little old me standing here saying I figured out that I was massively brainwashed by all this artificial stuff I was brought up to believe in. I didn't get free and enlightened until I threw it all away and started following what I felt in my free spirit purely. All I have to do is honor who I am by releasing the natural energy I feel within myself every day when I wake up. I live for spirit, for the experience of life itself not to keep score according to some fake capitalist paradigm of life out there. I'm in harmony with who I was born to be. Enlightened, free people live to try to transcend their limits all the time because it makes them feel high or like they're soaring freely and it connects me with the only thing I know for sure that's either divine or supernatural, the essence inside of me. What else is there? There's nothing from all that plastic stuff and fake knowledge the world created for itself. Can my little book help people find their way back to who they really are? I doubt it. I don't think most people are strong enough or interested in their own lives enough to try to live euphoric, interesting lives. The power of cultural indoctrination is too strong. It's so much easier to just watch TV, listen to the radio, read trashy magazines, shop at the mall watch the latest hyped up movie at a theater and go on frivolous websites looking for a passive thrill. It's not only in all the mass media. It's in all your friends, family, and the people you're surrounded by. Almost everybody is living by these artificial paradigms. Do you have the guts and the strength to say screw them all, you're gonna follow your true nature and live to release the energy in your free spirit every day? It's not that hard to be a pacified clone, work some job, buy good tasting food and junk at the mall then go home and park yourself in front of a screen. The purpose of life is to constantly release the energy in your free spirit that your creator endowed you with. It's not to be endlessly entertained by pop culture entertainment, to gluttonously eat food you don't need, to buy a bunch of meaningless things at the mall, to decorate your house with meaningless trinkets nor is it about the artificial values of status and success defined by the capitalist marketing machine. 
Nowadays almost nobody lives by the natural free spirit within themselves. We are heartily brainwashed to follow the artificial values that the modern Western world has created for itself from the time we start watching TV at two or three years old then after we go all through this dance routine of how to live according to society's standards, we're left wondering why we still feel like there's something missing even when we're good little clones work in some job we don't really like, looking for new trinkets at the mall, eating comfort food in front of our HD big screen TVs with satellite service. We're trained that life is lived in the routine of the traditional work ethic, not the ongoing flow of time and experience that it really is. We're taught that life is about the eight or so subjects taught in grade school. Other subjects don't count. Discovering life as you live it doesn't rate. Creative thinking doesn't count. Following your own curiosity doesn't count. Doing things for your own intrinsic interest outside a classroom don't count. The outside world of animals, nature, industry, real estate, politics, money, altered states of consciousness, euphoric emotions, or poverty are rarely mentioned in grade school. The biggest tragedy is that your natural intuition, creativity, and curiosity get squashed by the grade school agenda. Your brain is channeled into focusing on a few academic subjects and that's it. We're taught that we must aspire for career success by choosing from among the few hundred options offered to us as worthy professions to pursue if we want to be successful according to societal standards then we must work hard and even cheat and exploit other people in order to stand on the pedestal to be at the top of our chosen profession. This is the American dream ideology. Do what you must to get to the top even if it means destroying other people's lives. It's classic Machiavellian ideology. This is one of the hidden agendas of grade school and college. When I went through the system, I was always ranked as to how good my marks were relative to everybody else in my class. Lucky for me, I had an intrinsic love for knowledge and always finished in the top few but it wasn't until years later that I realized it was all a stupid game trying to make me compete with others for artificial values and trophies that didn't mean anything next to what I felt inside of myself free and pure. American dream capitalism is all about standing on the illusory pedestal as the illusory winner. There's no room for trying to figure out a way to earn a living by doing something you're naturally interested in. It's all about profit, production, market share, and being number one in your particular milieu. We're taught that socioeconomic status is the scorecard of success and happiness in life. It is defined by how high up your profession is in the status hierarchy of all professions, how high up you are within your profession, how much money you make, how big your house is, how many cars you own and how expensive they are. We're taught that the key to happiness is material excess. TV shows are always showing us rich, famous, elitist, uppity people having a great, old time pursuing frivolous lifestyles of extreme material luxury then the TV commercials come on to complement these hyped up, glitzy shows by trying to hook you into buying into this lifestyle brand that your self-worth, happiness and popularity is determined by how much material stuff you own. Pop culture entertainment is presented to us as the land of godlike, advanced elitists where people are manufactured to appear larger than life to us as pop stars, movie stars, and professional athletes. We're taught that these are coolest, most popular, super gifted, most advanced people of society that are really more like demigods than human beings. We should consider it a privilege to be entertained by them, admire them, and try to imitate them. In essence, we're trained by the capitalist marketing machine to sit on our asses and constantly look for new entertainment and answers on a screen, regardless of whether it's a TV screen, a movie screen, a computer screen or a video game screen. They never tell us about creating our own lives through what we do and how we think. They just tell us to keep watching more TV, more movies, keep playing more video games and keep buying the stuff they advertise. They tell us that one of the highest pleasures of life is good tasting food, particularly junk food. Food is advertised in the TV commercials all the time. This contributes to this passive consumer spectator lifestyle we're indoctrinated to buy into. Work some average job somewhere, go home, eat junk food and watch silly shows on TV. 
and then we wonder why 70% of the population is overweight and type 2 diabetes is rampant not to mention the mental health depression epidemic of people living uninspired mundane lives. Then there's religion and new ageism which to me are delusional, soothing fairy tales for weak minds. They're absurd stories but people buy into them looking for something to fill up their inner sense of emptiness. The fake knowledge tragedy of the human soul. Society has created a bunch of fake knowledge and big, fraudulent formal institutions that are trying to make us think they have the advanced, scientific expertise to help us deal with our lives that's much better than the inherent wisdom our creator God endowed us. The funny thing is that the human race got along fine before all this phony knowledge was created in the last hundred years or so. They're trying to separate us from our true natures and get us to give over control of our lives to them, the mental health industry, the self-help industry, psychology, psychiatry, sociology, psychotherapy, cognitive therapy, the law of attraction, the ultimate edge, the seven habits of highly effective people and any other science of the mind they claim to have come up with that will supposedly enhance your life and solve all your problems. It's all a big scam to make us feel powerless and indoctrinate us to think that somebody else has the answers to life better than we have within ourselves so that they can intimidate us and make money off us through mental health drugs, therapy sessions, and oodles of self-help, psychobabble books and tapes. I'm not disputing the fact that a few people like autistic children, schizophrenics, and people with traumatic brain injuries have something wrong with their organic brains and need help to try to improve their ability to think clearly but the big, massive scam has been to blame every human weakness and failing on an organic, inherent disorder of the brain that can only be fixed by drugs and therapy. It's a big lie. The vast majority of us were born with perfectly fine brains, not inherently defective ones as the mental health industry is currently preaching in a big way. You create your biochemistry through how you live. You create your own depression, anxiety, neuroses, phobias, and addictions through what you do or don't do. Inactivity, misery, and negative thinking change the biochemistry of the brain to make you feel miserable, tired and lethargic. Your mental weaknesses are not the result of an organic defect in your brain beyond your control as the mental health industry is trying to have us believe. You create your miserable, tense mind by following the artificial values of the world that you got sucked into buying so you can undo it by following your true nature the way you were born to. If you follow your free spirit, you live a vital, inspired life. As you develop strength and self-respect by purging your natural energy, your mental problems go away. Global warming is the current tragedy afflicting planet Earth. Cultural indoctrination is the tragedy afflicting the souls of people in modern Western society and the funny thing is that most of us have been so massively brainwashed that we think we're free. We don't even realize that we sold out our true natural identities to this package deal of life marketed at us by the mass media, the capitalist marketing machine, the formal education systems and government propaganda which are all in cahoots in trying to turn us into a bunch of passive, manageable consumeristic spectator clones. Go back to George Orwell's novel 1984 with his talk of Big Brother and the big TV screens everywhere. Most of us willingly sacrifice the free pursuit of our lives in exchange for comfort, entertainment, and good tasting food. It's the tragedy nobody wants to admit to. My take on modern Western society is most people sitting in their comfortable homes and apartments, plugging into some kind of pop culture entertainment, eating comfort food, feeling cozy as complacent consumer spectators but in fleeting moments of clarity when their inner voices assert themselves, they know they betrayed their souls. They did not do what they really wanted to with their lives. They did not become the people they had the potential to be if they had the guts to follow their free spirits and do what it wanted them to do. This is what I believe modern Western society has degenerated to, a bunch of lost souls living by artificial standards detached from the true natures they were born with. Nobody dreams of ending up an overweight, mundane, tired-looking, uninspired person but this is where most people end up in a technologically advanced, pop culture world. They didn't do what they really wanted to do with their lives. This sense of self-betrayal sits inside of them and sends them further into feelings of emptiness and misery. There is a way out. 
you can always regenerate yourself by making a worthy effort to live to release the natural energy in your soul every day. This is the only way to be happy in the glorious sense as opposed to some mundane idea of happiness you got from the society you live in. In a lot of ads, an image of happiness is sitting on a yacht, sipping wine but this won't make you happy. Nor will a shopping spree where you buy a bunch of stuff at the mall. The only way to really feel happy is to release a lot of natural energy from your soul with intensity and love for the process. Do this every day for the rest of your life. That's it. There's nothing else that makes you feel high on life all the time. Do you want to see a real winner of life? Find someone who does something inspired, tough, challenging and worthy that they really love to do every day. Chapter 2 If there's no natural joy, there's nothing. Free spiritism is about game. All that psychobabble new age stuff out there is another version of the fairy tale The Emperor's New Clothes, all these people acting deep and profound, worshipping their gurus and philosophers but you just have to take one look at them to know where they're really at, if they got it going on, if they got some primal magnetism to physically attract members of the opposite sex on looks alone because life is primal. We know who's got game by instinct. I'm 50 years old as I write this. I want game, to know that I can still attract the occasional chick here and there on looks alone without relying on some job title or teeth plated with diamonds like I saw some hip hop star do to himself. Everything's pretense except for you yourself alone as you face the world. If you want game you have to earn your self respect every day. There's no other way to possibly feel really, really good day after day. Everything else fades but this. The entire self-help slash new age industry is based on positive affirmations, thinking positive thoughts. Go ahead, think all the positive thoughts you want. Think all the negative ones too. So what? The positive ones won't give you game and the negative ones can't hurt you if you don't let them. It's just cheap self-delusion. It's your choice in how you think, act and live. You get game through sweat equity. You get power through action. You earn it then you don't have to look in the mirror to tell yourself how wonderful you are. It's something you know within yourself. Ask yourself if you feel like you got game, not necessarily for anyone else but for you, for your own sense of well-being. If you ain't got it, earn it by purging the natural energy in your free spirit every day for a year then you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you'll still be a generic, flatline person. Everything is primal. The only power you got is primal power. It's not in the car you drive or your position at company X. It's in what you feel and do every day which gives you your body and face which tells everybody what you're really all about. If you're really enlightened, you don't care what other people think. You just have the inner dignity to take pride in who your God created you to be. Look at the relationship between you and your pets. They never speak but you still understand each other. Your dog doesn't wear big, fancy suits or drive a certain brand of car to tell you who he is. He doesn't have to. It's all about his spirit and the two of you relating on a primal level. If some guy looks like a snivellin wimp but he's touted as the latest guru of the moment, you know it's a con job. All his deep thinking apparently didn't make him the dynamic, strong, powerful buck with an easygoing peaceful way about himself that he really wants to be like. It's universal. Everybody wants to be strong, powerful, youthful, handsome for men, beautiful for women, full of energy with peace of mind. Even the people in the few native tribes left know when they come across a natural alpha type with charisma versus some pasty-faced generic person with no game. If some alleged guru ain't like this, he or she ain't a guru like all them geeky looking social science professors you can see at any college with their beards trying to look like Freud, a walking dead man with mouth cancer from smoking too much. That wasn't a very smart thing for the supposed father of psychology to do, smoke cigars until he destroyed his mouth then got hooked on cocaine to deal with his cancer pain. These caricature intellectuals hide behind their big words and their veneer of system sanctioned knowledge but they don't fool me. I read people in one look. I can tell who's got game and who doesn't, who's really enjoying their lives and who isn't. 
just let your mind go freely wherever it takes you. An enlightened free spirit follows his or her true nature. He doesn't put chains on it with silly psychobabble rules from phony gurus and lion preachers, claiming that God favors you because you're supposedly a Christian which I dispute because I'm like Gandhi, I'd respect Christians if I ever met one but they're a bunch of hypocrites like anyone who claims to worship any religion or any god. Hype can sell anything and then they try to shroud it in an aura of mysticism so that if you miss the point, they point the finger back at you and imply you're not wise, free, and enlightened enough to understand their deep concepts when the truth is that it's a pile of meaningless psychobabble bull from the get-go. Free spiritism is a meld of aesthetics and inspiration. Endless curiosity is probably the most important thing anyone can have. The entire self-help, psychobabble industry is centered around actors masquerading as wise people giving phony motivational speeches that are just empty words because the only way any individual lives a great life is to take action for his deepest, truest thoughts within himself. You can listen to all the psychobablists in the world and think all the positive power thoughts and steps to success that they give you and as soon as you stop, it's all gone. None of it lasts because it's artificial knowledge next to your true nature. A part of the marketing ploy of these people in the new age, self-help, psychobabble business is that they try to shroud their particular brand of snake oil in an aura of esoteric mysticism. They act like deep profound elitists in on the advanced wisdom of the ages passed down through the great minds in human history which they were wise enough to discover and pass on to the masses for these current times. Before I went to college to study psychology, I thought it was this real cool, deep, fascinating, mystical study of the secrets of the human condition that they have insight into but then after I got into it, I realized it was just a bunch of low-level crap with their quantitative-based studies, manipulating their dependent variables, trying to find minor tendencies and trends in human behavior while neglecting the most important thing of all, the intuitive essence or soul we live by naturally. The way we were born. In the worlds of psychobabble and new age garbage, they try to complexify life with a bunch of foolishness that doesn't have any relevance to life as lived day by day. They shroud their diatribe in a sense of mysticism, trying to make you, the average citizen, who doesn't have the luxury of free time to read philosophy and psychology books because you have to work for a living, feel deficient because you don't have these terms on the tip of your tongue like ego, cognitive dissonance, attribution theory, learned helplessness, operant conditioning, utilitarianism, etc. You might feel intimidated by some of this stuff because you didn't study it in school but it's all a smoke screen next to your own natural inherent wisdom inside of you that you were born with but they don't tell you that. They're hiding behind this mask of phony knowledge, pretending they know something deep and advanced about life that regular people don't know but they don't. It's a big fake job. They're protecting their psychobabble professions by pretending it's a real cool advanced technology of the mind but it's the Wizard of Oz and the Emperor's new clothes, a bunch of system clones all parroting each other with their mutual bullshit. If you want to feel high on life every day, there's only one hard and fast rule. Every morning when you wake up, you have to know that your purpose for the day is to release most of the natural energy in your free spirit and do it. Do it every day one day at a time and you can laugh at the foolishness of the world like I do. The act of releasing your natural energy constantly all the time does several things for you. Moving the body has a freeing effect on you that makes you feel strong, powerful, and free. If you don't believe me, try dancing sometime, alone in your room with your favorite music turned up if you're too self-conscious to do it at your local dance bar. You always feel good after you do it. Do you understand exactly why? It's the spirit of free spiritism. That's why I feel good all the time. My life is one big release of my natural, free-spirited energy. Purging one's natural energy is releasing one's spirit. This is what you were born to do by nature. When you release your spirit all the time, you feel fulfilled, happy, loose and good. Almost nobody does this or realizes it's the key to life because they're either following the artificial values of the world or sitting around like passive logs to be entertained by what's on a screen. Your body releases endorphins that go to your brain to make you feel anywhere from good to great. 
your brain releases endorphins too that make your body feel energetic and vital. When you feel good about your life by purging the natural power in your soul, your mind feels strong, good, and inspired and gives you more energy to do more of what you're into. It's a never-ending loop of euphoria. Release the energy in your mind, body, and soul all time, they all act on each other to make you an inspired, strong, happy person. Just figure out a way to earn a living from what you love to do that comes naturally from your inner being. Unless you've ever ran with your life like this in an easy, powerful stride, you don't know what I'm talking about. Too bad for you. The exact opposite happens if you don't follow my only hard and fast rule and don't release your natural energy. You're either following the artificial values of the world or not doing much of anything as with the passive consumer spectator couch potato lifestyle. At some point in time, your body, mind, and soul start to experience self-betrayal, a gnawing sense of emptiness within yourself that you're not honoring who you were born to be and what you were born to do. If you keep sitting around doing nothing, it spirals in on you. Feelings of generic mundanity spiral down into depression as you feel more sorry for yourself and your mind paints the bleakest picture possible for you, an aging, homeless man or woman who doesn't even have the guts to face people enough to ask them for a job. It's common sense but that's what enlightenment is, you see human life clearly and simply without any bull attached to it. A lot of people are too clouded and distracted to see objective reality as I see it by instinct. Be active, release the natural energy in your soul and you got everything you need. Sit around doing nothing but absorbing pop culture entertainment or praying to some deity you can't see and sooner or later you start to have contempt for yourself which caves in on you and further increases your sense of misery, passivity, depression, and helplessness. The solution to most of the mundanity and misery of the human condition barring real tragedies which happen to most of us from time to time is an active lifestyle releasing the natural energy you feel in your soul. That's it. No psychobabble. No new age bull. No gods, no masters. Keep the music in your soul moving all the time. It's the only way to live a great life. This is the line between happy people and everyone else. Are you right in the pulse of your soul? When you go through a tragedy or bad luck, it's always the same story. There's shock, hurt, a pity party for one then after a while, you either accept it or die inside. If you accept it, you're right back to the same old story of life, you're either trying to be actively inspired or you're a passive, generic wimp. There's nothing more to life than that at any moment. You're either honoring your natural spirit or you're not. Somebody said as soon as a man starts engaging in meaningful work, all his demons leave him. When a person sets to work, even if it is the most unqualified, primitive, simple work, the human soul calms down. As soon as a person starts to work, all the demons leave him and cannot approach him. A man becomes a man. Thomas Carlyle The solution to all the misery and depression in the world is simply to move. Do something, anything. Depression pills and psychoanalysis don't work. They're a big con job. They can't help a problem of the human soul. I've written a book about it if you're interested. Why I laugh at gurus. All the self-help, new age bunch are into this kick about. You are what you think so think positive thoughts. If you will it so with good intentions, the divine power of the universe will give it to you, supernatural magic. Life is about serving others. This is all totally delusional crap because you are not what you think. If you were, all those teenage girls brainwashed by pop culture entertainment would be supermodels dating the latest movie star heartthrob and every fat teenage kid would be a superstar professional athlete. All those starving artists out there would be rich, famous, and admired by the world for their great original, inspired talents. If you think there's some divine power that comes when you're ready to give you what you want and help make you a superstar of life then you're a Pollyanna who's gonna get ripped to shreds by the way human nature really works which starts at self-centered and goes to evil. There is some goodness in most of us but by and large we're mostly focused on our own little comfort zones to the callous exclusion of everybody else. This is the way we really are as a species, 
no different than apes hoarding their food. If we were really as good as virtually all of us like to think we are, we would have shared our wealth and solved all world hunger, sickness, and poverty by now but it's still the fat cats over there trying to keep the poor, homeless people away from their stuff, afraid of them, contemptuous of them while the poor, huddled masses are thinking they're heartless snob elitist phonies. Why are our shopping malls full of useless things we don't need? Why are most of us overweight? Why is TV mostly a wasteland of frivolous shows paid for by frivolous advertising? It's all about selling people stuff to help them fill up their empty souls with some manufactured transient thrill all the way from the latest pretentious pop star trying to act all cute, cool, friendly and bubbly in order to suck you into buying their CDs to the fabulous eyelashes you can get as advertised in the TV commercial. Society is based on selling you, the sucker, this lifestyle of endless consumption. What exactly does home decor do to help you maximize the bohemian spiritual pursuit of your life? Look around your house right now. How much of the stuff you own is stuff you don't really need? All this proves my point that we're more self-centered than we are good even though virtually every one of us deludes ourselves into thinking we're better and kinder than we really are because if we were truly Christ-like people, we would live modestly not be so concerned with indulging ourselves with frivolous entertainment and material things and we would live to help our fellow man but apparently we're more interested in romance novels, self-help books, fashion, video games, hair color and professional sports. This obsession with always wanting more entertainment and more material things exists because we have empty souls. The capitalist machine helped create this I want it all, I want it now ideology of life that's rampant in this pagan idolatry of excess we've created for ourselves. We want to feel good and better right now so we become the eternal consumer spectators the marketing machine wants us to be. The problem is that we're bottomless pits. We keep consuming more stuff and more entertainment but the best we can feel is momentary pacified comfort then it's gone because we don't have the inner dignity you can only get by honoring who you feel you are in your soul. Almost nobody has inner dignity because most of us are following the artificial values of capitalism, socioeconomic status, titillation through pop culture entertainment and the pursuit of happiness through material goods then as an afterthought, we say we're Christians. We wonder why we're a lost society of mundane people not getting any true joy out of our lives, not feeling like we're perfectly aligned with our true natures the way the gods and divine forces of the universe made us to be. I honor my inner dignity by following my true nature while not buying into anything out there nor bowing down to any social science religious new age bull. That's what I'm telling you to do if you want to be enlightened and free like I am. The psychobabble industry is just another symptom of a lost society and all the con artist gurus are there ready to exploit it. The only people benefiting from all this self-help, power of intention, new agey hokey crap are the people who write books about it then sell them hyping them up but it's all a scam because life in the real world is random and your own inherent wisdom beats anything any guru or phony expert of life calling themselves a psychologist or a life coach can possibly tell you. Some people get real lucky, others are lucky just to be alive while most people live a moderately comfortable life by working very hard at some job just to be able to afford a middle class lifestyle. In our selfish capitalist world, Life is really about getting what we can for ourselves even if we have to fake it and act like we're doing whatever it is we do because we want to serve people because we say it's our life purpose. This is the new age, psychobabble, politically correct view of the moment, the purpose of life is to serve others. If this was true, why do we live in houses bigger than what we need, drive more expensive cars than we need? constantly buy meaningless things at the mall and gorge ourselves on pop culture entertainment and junk food every night to the point where most of us are overweight while there's a homeless kid somewhere starving right now. What a great lie or self-delusion. I make no bones about what I am, a hedonist interested in purging whatever is inside of me, a part of which is my craving for sensual pleasures and a part of which is releasing whatever is inspired and noble within me for my own dignity as a human being. I don't live to serve others. I live to honor myself for the creator that made me. If something that I do serves other people such as the writing of this book, 
that's good but in the end I did it to explore what was inside of me and exercise my mind not because I necessarily have an overwhelming need to serve my fellow men because at heart I think the human race is an inherently inferior flawed species that's going nowhere fast. I believe our only hope is genetic engineering. Some enlightened people with money should get together and set on a course to re-engineer the human race to be less aggressive, less greedy, smarter, more analytical, and more loving. If I ever run for a major political office and win, I'll dedicate multi-millions of dollars to this pursuit because I believe it's our only hope to thrive as a community of kindred spirit human beings. We're so territorial and self-centered that we sacrifice the potential benefits we would get if we were more cooperative and egalitarian enough to curb the greed of those with the most money who should righteously use some of their wealth to help the poor if they were good people. There would be a lot less violence. The people at the bottom rung of the ladder are so angry because the elitist fat cats rub it in their face every night on TV with their excessive lifestyles and condescending attitudes. If there was a greater distribution of wealth towards the middle, there would be a lot less social problems than we have now. Everybody is a hedonist by nature but then we get brainwashed. If I'm a hedonist by nature, why should anybody feel any different from me unless they're faking it, parroting the current politically correct thought of the moment which is to serve others which is kind of funny because I think sexual thoughts for my own gratification by nature way more than I think about serving the lost, lonely, helpless people of the world. I'm not purposely like this. It's always there calling me and I'm 50 years old as I write this. I have no choice but to follow my true nature. That's what the free spirit ideology is. I don't censor myself because of what my religion teacher and grade school teachers taught me and the conventional way most people around me live, at least on face. Read my sex book if you want more stuff about sensual liberation. I live by who I really am the way I was born without trying to put on some soppy two-faced face for the world. That's why I'm enlightened and free and everybody proclaiming to a new age sage or a Christian preacher are full of crap, because they're politically correct system clones trying to give the people some phony idealistic garbage to give them hope or an illusion of the straight and narrow to live by, promising that God or the Creator will reward them if they follow this way of life but the free, Enlightened people see past it all to trust only their true natures. The psychobabblists accredited from a formal academic institution are a little different. They follow basically two streams of thought. The psychoanalysis psychobabblists who say that the past determines who you are now and is responsible for your happiness so they talk to their clients about their childhoods in endless therapy sessions, to suck money out of them. In the end, nothing improves. Talking about your past and mulling over it doesn't make you happy. Every cute self-help book on the market breaks down into a set of discreet, mechanical one-liner rules about how to live a better life but they all fail because the human organism was not born to follow a list of steps or stages to a better life because we're holistic. We operate as unitary essences by intuition if left to our own devices without interference from the phony, packaged conventional wisdom from the world. These politically correct system clones don't like me because I'm cutting into their market share by telling everybody that the emperor has no clothes. It's all a big delusion for stupid people to buy into. I live for my own pleasure and well-being first just like you do too but I'm not faking it, pretending I don't like most new age, religious, psychobabble gurus claim. What is the male lion, who has not been exposed to all the touchy-feely psychobabble bull out there, thinking about? That's the true nature of the human beast not this soppy stuff you see on TV talk shows where the hosts are acting like concerned, altruistic people while living lives of excess in big mansions. Some of them earn multi-millions of dollars for acting like they care about the well-being of their fellow men. If they really cared, they'd give their paycheck away to help the downtrodden. How many millions of suckers fall for that one, the phony, well-fed talk show host? One of those gossip shows on TV like TMZ.com should expose every fake who comes onto the public scene talking about how good they are and how they want to help people. They should do a public record search on them then expose their assets including pictures of their house, s, cars, and other expensive toys. Then we'll see the hypocrisy of our so-called gurus and celebrities. 
it's no different than when Chaucer wrote Canterbury Tales and exposed the fakery of the elite in his day. Free spiritism has contempt for this fraudulent poisoning of the mind with lying, fake idealistic ideas about how to live the best life possible by being a brainwashed flake who thinks that positive thinking and the so-called law of attraction will open everything up for you. You might get lucky. You might not. It has nothing to do with any of these deceptive ideas out there. The only thing that any human being can know for sure is who they were born to be by nature and follow it every day by releasing most of this potential natural energy they should feel within themselves when they wake up in the morning. Everything else after this is a pile of bull and delusion. That's why this is the best life wisdom book ever written, because I don't listen to anyone else's soppy phony idealistic bull that has no relevance to me when I set out to do something tough and worthy to honor who I am every single day. Not one of them with all their idealistic sounding pros can touch anything I do when I'm releasing the energy in my free spirit with intensity, inspiration, and willpower. Everything from out in the world is a big load of crap next to what any individual does that's tough, challenging, stimulating and natural for them to do. That's it. You either know it and live by it or you don't. There's nothing that the world can give me that can greatly enhance my life. I know what I have to do in order to give value to myself day after day. The thrill of life. The big marketing machine creates artificial deficiencies within people to get them to think that they're missing out on something or that they don't quite measure up to its brainwashed image of coolness and success so they get on the treadmill of working hard to make enough money to buy trendy things and watch the latest pop culture entertainment in order to try to imitate the manufactured cool characters paraded at us as stars and celebrities. The system exists in a box. Within that box they tell you you're free and can choose from the X number of options they offer in any particular situation but they never tell you that there are other options besides their definition of life in the box. If you look around, you'll realize that almost everybody is buying into this one-dimensional way of life that's constantly pummeled at us through the mass media, our formal institutions and all the brainwashed people we're surrounded by who are implicitly trying to keep everybody else in line in conforming to it even if it's on a subconscious level where they're not aware of doing it. People are always looking for common ground with each other and if they find that an individual is not a sports fan like they are, doesn't buy into the status games of the world, doesn't go to church, doesn't watch the news, doesn't care about pop culture entertainment, etc., they feel intimidated that this person is not a conformist to society's game like they are so they try to make him or her conform and otherwise show disapproval in some way. The true purpose of life is to examine yourself and pursue whatever truth, beauty, sensuality, love, and natural talents you find in there but because most people live by the artificial values of the world rather than by their true natures, they feel out of harmony with themselves. They don't know why so they do all kinds of stupid things to try to make themselves feel better in the moment but nothing works except for honoring your true natural identity by releasing your natural energy with intensity and lust for life every day, one day at a time. You were born with a true nature. The more you follow it over a lifetime, the happier, stronger, more vital and inspired you'll be. The less you follow it, the more miserable, mundane, average, depressed, and empty you'll feel. Happiness in the euphoric sense of the enlightened free spirit's lifestyle as opposed to happiness as a feeling of bland comfort is the result of how much natural energy you use up from your true nature on any given day. Take you life for a good to great ride of intense exertion and you'll always feel good about yourself and have plenty of self-respect. Presuming you come from a family that wasn't always worried about making enough money to pay bills and you were given the freedom to explore your life, by the time you were five years old, you should have been already going in the direction of your true nature, naturally drawn to the few activities you really like to do in life but then you went to school where life is reduced to about eight subjects and you're taught to compete in everything from academic grades to sports rather than doing things for the fun of it because you like to do them like you did before you went to school. This is capitalist brainwash, to set you on the path where you're competing with everybody else in everything even if it's not overtly so. This mindset creates great workers always trying to outdo one another, great business moguls who'll do anything to crush the competition, 
great scientists who want to beat everyone else in trying to discover a cure for cancer but they're all doing it for the wrong reasons. They're always competing for illusory notches and a higher socio-economic status in a capitalist world unlike someone like me who laughs at this limited, brainwashed world. I live by the purity within me for my own sake. The rest of the world is mild scenery next to my standard in my soul. I know I'm right and the rest of the world is wrong which is why I look at it from a distance with amusing cynicism. This capitalist pop culture patriotic God-fearing society that we've created for ourselves sets us up to buy into it as the prevailing ideology of life but it's really a huge marketing venture geared to get everybody in the same mindset as eternal consumers, always dependent on the box, TV, radio, internet, for our next bit of stimulation as opposed to living by our true, naked essences following whatever might be original and inspired within ourselves. Whenever I go to someone's house, I always try to look at the remote control to see how faded the numbers are on it from constant clicking. People are constantly looking for the next thrill on the box but even the greatest show ever can't compete with the spectrum of intensity I experience when I go for a tough run or get absorbed in one of my creative intellectual pursuits. We live in the most prosperous society ever yet it's not as though people en masse are trying to live strong, enlightened and free in the mythical Garden of Eden. Almost everybody over 40 degenerates into a soft, puffy, pacified mass of flesh then we wonder why we're overweight, depressed with deteriorating brains and bodies. Nothing from out there affects me much. It's all either spiritual pollution or mental manipulation to me, from the news story harping on about the latest sad events to the latest hype about the coolest new movie. I can't buy into any of it which means I can't be manipulated but when I talk to most people, I'm usually able to figure out very quickly what particular illusion or brainwash any person is living by. Very few people are free enough to think pure thoughts without having been brainwashed by anything. My only allegiance is to myself the way my God created me to be. I wanna share it with you in case you've been brainwashed to tell you that you don't have to be a clone. You have power within yourself to live freely as an individual should you decide to use it. In an ideal enlightened free spirit's life, you only do what you love to do. Releasing your natural energy every day with love for the process and intensity like you're doing it because you must because it comes from a divine primordial force within you as an artist of your life is the best way to live. It's not enough to just release any type of energy to expend yourself. I realize we have to work for a living but if you work a job you don't really like or study something in school that doesn't really interest you, you don't get the quality of life and longevity benefits that you can only get by releasing the natural energy in your soul. Sitting around not doing much of anything or engaging in frivolous pursuits don't count either because you're not releasing that store of natural energy that's inside of you every morning when you wake up. This is why we're a lost society. Most people work routine jobs then buy stuff at the mall and watch stuff on a screen. They might go to a movie on Saturday afternoon and the bar on Saturday night and that's pretty well the entire extent of their lives. People wonder why we got multi-millions of people on anti-anxiety, anti-depression, high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes drugs. Chapter 3 Self-respect is pride in what you do. Long may you run. Everybody who lives in a capitalist world realizes the existential emptiness of their lives at some point in time because working any job or running any business is an artificial value thrust over our true natures. It doesn't matter how interesting it is, life was meant to be more primal, natural, creative, spiritual, aesthetic, free, and romantic than that. Of course you have to work a job or run a business unless you're lucky enough to be able to earn a living through your creative inspired pursuits but every individual, at least in the fantasies of their minds, has a great potential for a glorious, free, enlightened life. Your soul houses your most perfect visions of beauty. We're flawed mortal human beings but if you don't live for the possibilities within yourself, you got nothing. You have no life. If you're just some overweight consumer watching TV, you're nowhere. You don't fool me. I don't care if they call you the Grand Puba and you live in the biggest mansion on the hill. Releasing your free spirit is the only way you can get high on life every day. Everything else loses its kick. 
when I start a tough physical activity and do it, it's never a cakewalk. It's always hard and I always feel the same after I've done it, great. There's a song around called Long May You Run covered by Neil Young and several others but the question is how do you keep your spirit strong, youthful, and free for life? There's only one way. Know what your pure free spirit is away from everything you've ever been brainwashed by. Honor it every day by releasing the natural energy you feel inside of you. All the psychobabble and new age stuff in the world can't touch this as the answer to live the best life you possibly can. I crashed and burned a long time ago when I realized that living as a yuppie wasn't doing it for me so I went on my bohemian quest to discover I have my own standard of what a great life is and I'll follow it right up until I die because that's who I am by nature and nothing more. If you don't live by your true nature, eventually you'll get fat or anorexic for some people, start feeling mundane, get depressed then take depression pills which don't work because the problem is one of a wounded soul, not the pharmacology of the brain. The truth is that you create your biochemistry through how you live. The only sacred, divine thing you know for sure that you got is that little bit of purity inside of you that your God endowed you with. My life is simple. I know my true identity, who I was born to be away from capitalist brainwash or anything else out in the world. I honor it by releasing most of my natural energy to that end every day. I feel good, strong, and free most of the time. This is where modern society has screwed itself. We have become so concerned with being successful in a capitalist world and being cool by imitating the characters in pop culture entertainment that very few of us live pure lives true to ourselves. It's the big spiritual aesthetic bankruptcy that almost nobody seems aware of or talks about. The only way to keep feeling good all the time is to constantly release the natural energy in your free spirit in order to stay pure, loose, strong and free. Everything that the world offers you in terms of fun, entertainment, success, status, and material goods all fade away next to an individual knowing he or she must honor who they were born to be by releasing the natural energy they feel in their souls every single day. This is a person's true life force or life blood. All you ever really got is that pure essence, soul, or consciousness you were born with. If you constantly keep it strong by working it, you always feel good. If you let it rot away and follow the standards and values from the world, you'll eventually lose a hold of who you really are and start slipping away into a mundane to miserable lifestyle. Most people will follow the artificial values of the world and neglect their true natures such that over time, they will lose whatever sense of strength, inspiration, beauty, freedom, and lightness they may have started out with which will be replaced by the pursuits of capitalism, career success, material goods and pop culture entertainment which will suck out whatever natural love they have for the art of living their lives for the spirit of it. If there's a God, he gave you the most divine thing you own, your free spirit. If God doesn't exist, then nature gave you an intuitive holistic essence that contains all the wisdom you need to live your life with fun and great joy if you want it. Your consciousness, that free flow of thoughts going through your brain, is the most divine thing you own. It is your naked, pure, true, real self. Do not let it get invaded and polluted by the ideas and ideologies of the outside world. Many people feel neurotic when they're not answering to a job or school. I feel that they're chasing illusions of a fantasy life in the future that they think they're working for but all we have is right now. The past doesn't matter. You shouldn't mull on it especially if it's negative so that shoots the so-called pseudoscience of psychotherapy down. The future doesn't matter because you can only live it when you get there. I create my life as I live it. I have very few material needs. I earn money through my creative pursuits. That's enough for me to live freely all the time, answering to no one but myself. You either enjoy your life as you live it or you lose because by signing up for any paper chase or rat race, by the time you're ready to enjoy the money you've made, you will have destroyed your body and soul in the process. Everybody gets angry and thinks violent thoughts. In your pure state, you are your true nature. It has lots of noble, great stuff in it and lots of selfish, carnal stuff in it too. I'm perfectly aware of the whole me. I know how good, noble, primal, self-centered, and selfish I am. 
I don't deny my violent and sexual thoughts when I get them. I don't consider myself evil but I feel entitled to live my life freely hassled by none so if somebody gets in my way by being an asshole as opposed to the government which I have no choice but to obey, I feel the anger and I have those primal feelings of violence to destroy what's interfering with me. I know that I can't impose my base, negative qualities onto other people if I want to have friends and stay out of jail so I control them like most people do. I have a rich fantasy life as I suspect all people have to some extent, both G and X rated, but most of us are functional enough to know other people don't want to deal with our fantasies. We got our fantasies in our own minds so we play out our roles as decent citizens while having a separate existence in our private thoughts even though almost nobody admits to who they really are except for a few fringe, erotica, and sex writers like me. I express some of my sensuous and romantic musings in the sex and love book I've written. I feel like a modern day Marquis de Sada in the sense that he was free enough to express some of the thoughts and desires that he naturally felt within himself but he was kinky BDSM while I'm pretty well straight vanilla with the occasional fudge brownie thrown in just for fun. The point is that we're free to be who we are the way we're born if we know that we have an individual purity and choose to follow it in the face of all the indoctrinating forces of the world trying to turn us into good capitalists who work functional jobs, watch TV then constantly spend our money on things we don't need. I'm not against money. I think my freedom to live my life my way is more important than aspiring to earn more money than I realistically need to be able to do most of the things I want unhassled by the man. I release my positive energy and know my dark side in the privacy of my mind. I don't repress these thoughts. I think them through but you would never know how close I live to my pure, primal self if you met me and talked to me because I'm a perfect, superficial, one-dimensional gentleman in public the way I was brought up to be at Catholic grade school but behind closed doors, my life is rich, decadent, bohemian, free, and sensuous. I am who I was born to be by nature freely without repression, guilt, or shame. This is a big step towards enlightenment, to get past all the self-censoring controls they try to instill into you in grade school, in Cub Scouts, in religion class and in the patriotic diatribe the politicians and military leaders try to instill into us through their speeches on TV. Your life should be a free exploration of who you are because you were born that way by nature. Discover what's good inside of you, pass it on to both earn a living and share your life with other people and don't hurt any living thing. There's a big bohemian, romantic, aesthetically inspired world of fantasy, lust, fun, adventure, and creativity inside of everyone. The question is how much will you live it out versus how much will you buy into the reward system of the world based on material goods and pop culture entertainment. If you want to be enlightened, free and happy, you have to know the real you in your free spirit and let it out one way or another. You have to express or purge what you feel inside of you. If you don't, this unexpressed, unused energy inside of you will eventually build up until you're feeling anywhere from mundane to depressed all the time. The joy of constantly letting out the natural energy within oneself is the key to happiness. Self-respect equals strong spirit. You earn your self-respect and feel joy while you're releasing the natural inspired energy inside of you. You have to love what you do. It has to come from your inner being which is your true nature. Self-respect is a daily thing. To me, it's a synonym for strong spirit. The way you live shows through your body, face, and aura. It's not hard to distinguish between people who look like they have strong spirits from other people because they have a kind of inspired power to them. Young people have this grace period where they look good without trying and since good looks are equated with goodness and strength, other people think they're strong and noble even if they're not. I've known plenty of girls who were stunning at 20 with that mundane, generic middle-aged look by 40. You know they lost something but what exactly did they lose? They lost their youthful spirit, a kind of inner strength where you're connected to the purity you were born with. Most people lose it by early middle age. The only way to keep a strong hold of it is to release your God-given store of natural energy every day but who does that, a few artists, farmers, athletes, teachers, musicians, dancers, hikers, nature outdoor people, activists, 
enlightened free spirits and that's about it. Writers don't count because they're cerebral. They just sit there. You have to release a good dose of your natural energy, creative, intellectual, physical, sensual, and loving. By the time we're 40, all those years of living give us the faces and bodies we deserve. Everybody has faded away except for the few people who live by self-respect with strong spirits. They still got a hold of their youthful sparks, their inspired power, the gleam in their eye and wholesome looks while most people are overweight with those pasty complexions that bear no marks of a life lived with intensity, toughness, and the joy of freely expressing oneself to the aesthetics of the free spirit within. You can't build up a store of self-respect or a strong spirit as with money. You have to earn it every day, one day at a time. If you don't earn it for several days straight, you start to devolve into mundanity very quickly. You lose that sense of lightness, control, power, and fun that life should really be all about, a feeling every day when you wake up that you're gonna do some tough, worthy, interesting things today and take your life for a good to great ride of exertion and sensual experience. It's self-honor. Every day when you wake up, you either know you must honor the true nature your God put into you when he created you by releasing most of that natural energy inside of you or you're not aware that this is what really matters in life so you follow the artificial values you're surrounded by in the society you live in. We've created huge self-help, new age, and capitalist success training industries and lots of weight loss, anorexic, anxiety, depression, alcoholism, addiction, stress management programs but most people's mental and emotional problems stem from a simple cause. The biggest problem in life in modern societies for people who are living at a decent standard of living and not constantly worried about basic survival is that they're living by the artificial values of their society therefore not tapped into who they were really born to be by nature. Over time, living by these artificial values messes people up. They lose whatever sense of joy or vitality they may have started out with. Think of yourself at five years old. That's about as real as most people ever get because after that, the school system gets its hooks into you. You'll get brainwashed by the world and probably never go back to being like that kid you were even though you have the same soul and consciousness for life. There should be no change in who you are ever if you're naturally following what's in your soul. We do not use up the inspired, loving and sensuous energy inside of ourselves. It's in there telling us through our inner voice how out of harmony we are with ourselves and how miserable we feel because we haven't purged it as we should by nature. I know how I feel after two or three days of not honoring myself by not releasing my natural energy then I look at people I'm surrounded by and see some of them who have not done anything inspired or sensuous in the past 10 or 20 years. They have not released their free spirits with intensity and passion for the love of the process then they wonder why they always feel anywhere from average to miserable so they go to the mall and buy more crap they don't need or buy a tub of ice cream or a case of beer or both. This is the capitalist solution to our woes, the quick fix search for the wounded soul which never works because tomorrow it's the same story. I either honor myself one day at a time by releasing my natural energy which frees my spirit and makes me feel anywhere from good to great or I'm right back in that same average, mundane headspace that just about everybody lives in except for the few enlightened free spirits around like me who are constantly purging their natural energy. Modern society's version of self-honor is to buy a new car, a new dress, get a makeover or buy a milkshake at Dairy King but none of these things work because they have no euphoric or transcendent effect on one's soul. It's like so what? I got a new piece of tin or some cosmetics plastered on my face. It's not like I did anything that makes me feel like I'm a champion of my life right now. The only way to feel anywhere from good to great on any given day is to release a good load of the natural energy that you felt in your soul when you woke up in the morning. If you do, you've honored who your God created you to be for that day. If you don't, you violate the only rule your God gave you when he created you, be who he made you to be. If you follow the artificial values of the world and neglect your true nature, you can never know true happiness because you're always out of harmony with yourself. If you listen to yourself, you'll hear your inner voice telling you that you're far away from the idealistic, strong, beautiful person you'd like to be.
it's that empty feeling that something is not quite right with your life. Money can't solve it. Neither can love. You alone must face yourself and honor the talents and abilities you were born with if you want to be one of the few people who live a great life for the hell of it because that's what life should be, a great sensory experience. You simply have to know what you were born to do and burn off that energy every day. It's the only way you can possibly feel anywhere from good to great and earn your self-respect every single day of your life, one day at a time. Just like you earn your self-respect by being true to yourself, you also earn self-contempt when you're not true to yourself and let your natural energy sit inside of you unused while you either sit around watching TV or do things that don't come from your soul like work a job that does nothing for you, study something in school that doesn't interest you, get addicted to something or read romance novels. If you don't live by your natural intuitive code, the unused store of natural energy builds up inside of you day after day until you feel depressed and miserable virtually all the time because you're dishonoring yourself by not releasing this natural energy you were born to purge every single day. The archetypes of the ideal human beings to me are Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They were too strong, healthy, natural, primal people living close to nature using their brains and skills to live bountiful lives. God punished them in the book of Genesis for going their own way too far but to my way of thinking they were just following the natural curiosity that he, God, gave them. I live by what I feel in my free spirit. It's all good as long as I don't let my anger get the better of me and take revenge on those who wrong me, not because I'm above my aggressive thoughts because I'm not. Nobody is. Everybody feels anger when somebody wrongs them. My nature tells me to punish people who use me, steal from me or otherwise exploit me but society has created laws and I'll lie by them in order to stay out of jail. Phony experts for everything. They're telling us how to think in all the many psychobabble new age and self-help books they've created. It's like we forgot to live by the intuitive wisdom we were born with. I saw the biggest psychobabble TV talk show host of the moment as I write this reveal his latest insight which is 5 steps culminating in step 5, program yourself for success. This is supposed to be the best wisdom we got in society yet it's stupid because you cannot program yourself or retrain your mind. Programming implies doing something artificial to somehow change the way you think therefore act which is symptomatic of a one-dimensional, capitalist world. He thinks a person can fix their lives by following his X number of steps and stages like a robot but it's total bull because you don't change. You are who you are the way you're born. The highest you can ever get to in life is to discover your true nature then honor it by releasing your natural energy every day with intensity and joy to honor who your God created you to be. That's it. You have to earn a living out in the world and not hurt other people but everything else that society tells you or teaches you is not necessarily who you are in your pure free spirit. Since your free spirit was given to you by the most divine force in the universe, your creator, nothing from the world is superior to it. Our society has been invaded by phony experts pretending they got something on wisdom in life but it all fades away except for your true nature. Every morning when you wake up, it's just you alone with your own thoughts. What do you do, follow your true nature or somebody else's bull? The only free, enlightened people are the ones who follow their true nature every day. Everything that's not physical, objective law was created by people so it's all fallible. Some guy gets a few academic degrees in any social science field, develops some theory or test then all the stupid people blindly accept it as the legitimate, formal knowledge of the system. I even saw one where a guy measures physical beauty in people on a scale that goes from 1 to 100. He measures their faces and bodies and plugs it into his formula. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It can't be dissected and measured. What is emotional intelligence? How about operant conditioning? There are all kinds of psychobabble terms around like this that mean nothing because your consciousness aka your soul is holistic. It can't be broken down into different categories or separate traits. To me, a wise person is somebody who lusts for a vital, inspired life. This is the logical conclusion for anyone who wants to get the most out of their lives. It's not about some introverted, nerdy type people hiding behind some letters after their names, 
pretending they know something deep and advanced, kinda like the Wizard of Oz hiding behind the curtain. It's all a big lie meant to intimidate people with some illusory mystique of advanced knowledge supposedly available in books and at our formal education institutions but it's just like the kid in the emperor's new clothes. I was looking through the American Psychological Association's website, APA.org, the other day. I couldn't stop shaking my head about how they created this massive industry of supposedly understanding human behavior out of thin air. It's all about expanding this field no different than expanding any product line in the capitalist world in order to make more money and give themselves the illusion of more credibility. They're so huge now that the average person would be intimidated by them thinking if they're that huge, they must have the goods on insight into the human condition even though a guy like me doesn't buy any of it. It's all verbal diarrhea next to the insights any individual can come to by analyzing his own life and also next to the wisdom I'm talking about in this book. There's nothing in the social sciences that I, as a lone individual living anywhere, even in a cave like my ancient ancestors did, can't equal or supersede through my own examination of my life. When you're in the cave alone thinking your own thoughts, that's the pure you. When you're plugged into society, working some job you don't really like, running in the rat race, reading books written by mainstream sanctioned system intellectuals, watching the mass media and trying to be cool like pop culture characters you see on TV, that's the artificial part of you. I studied a lot of the knowledge out there until I realized it was all created by mortal men and women like me. Whatever was written before 1950 may have some wisdom to it like Socrates's Know Thyself, Plato's Philosopher King and Ayn Rand's reverence for oneself but these people have no conception of the potential life I have the possibility to live in a technologically modern world. Whatever was written since 1950 within the academic system of the social sciences has an iatrogenesis element to it, the creation of fake, meaningless, or trivial knowledge to expand the academic field, to give it more legitimacy much like a company expands its product line even if the new products don't add anything to the functionality of the main product. If there are several hundred academic journals in the field of psychology, it doesn't matter if it's all useless knowledge except for the organic study of the brain. It's impressive and intimidating to the rest of the world to see that they have lots of journals supposedly full of useful studies on human behavior but what if it's all meaningless crap that yields no insights into the true nature of the human condition. I realized that all these liberal arts academic disciplines are little boxes that these pseudo-intellectuals buy into then perpetuate by being good little clones within the system. If somebody was really free and enlightened, they would see past it all and live their lives as free-thinking bohemians away from these closed institutions pretending they got the goods on knowledge, wisdom, and enlightenment about life in the liberal arts fields. Our lives have been packaged as a commodity. They got self-help books for every emotion, personality trait, type of relationship and hypothetical situation. You can read that stuff until you're blue in the face but you'll forget it all within three days because none of it addresses the holistic essence that you are and the intuitive way you live. Life ain't all that deep. It's just nature and spirit. Every day, if you release most of the natural energy in your free spirit, that's the greatest day you could possibly have within the spectrum of the human condition. You have to always regenerate yourself one day at a time. That's what separates the champions of life from the generic mass of people living mundane lives. All truly wise people respect themselves enough to honor the only thing they own, their bodies and spirits in order to try to maximize the sensuous experience of their lives. Life is spirit. All you have to do is figure out the spirit within yourself then honor it. It's so simple but many people choose to try to make lots of money rather than following their free spirits. Money is good. It can give you the means and the security to live by your free spirit but if you work a job that makes you sad, tired, and crushes the free spirit inside of you bit by bit, day by day, you lose at life. Everything else is the psychobabble and bull of the world. If it goes against what's in your true nature, don't buy into it. If you do, you're destroying your life. What about God? As a kid I was brought up in the Catholic Church. I thought it was a good thing for society to have religious standards but then I realized I have my own natural, inherent moral code inside of me. 
Some parts of the Bible contradict each other like the jealous God of the Old Testament who suddenly saw the wrong of his ways and became loving in the New Testament which is kind of funny if God is divinely wise. There are many rules in the Old Testament condemning people to death for trivial transgressions. They accepted slavery as a part of normal life in the Old Testament. Who did Cain and Abel marry if they were the children of the first man and woman on earth? Every alleged holy book ever written was created by a human being so there's nothing divine there that's superior to what I can create in my own brain. On top of that, God didn't come to soothe me when I prayed to him in a tough moment. It was just me alone praying to thin air like a sucker. It was right then I realized I was being sold a bill of goods. And then on the Vision Channel in Canada, I was watching a Hindu music video where they were all dancing and praising a statue that looked like Mary and the baby Jesus. They looked foolish but what they were doing was no different than what Christians do. I'm neither an atheist nor religious now. I deal with my life as I live it. I'll deal with God when I die if he's there and that's it. Until then, I will not concern myself with any religions. I live by the spirit I feel inside of me. If God exists, he gave me my free essence as a human being. The best I can do is to honor it. Self-honor and nobility. It's all about living by your spirit the way you were born. That's the only real honor in life. Living by values other than your true nature is like putting on an expensive designer, high fashion shirt, or the jacket from your football team. You look like all the other guys trying to be cool, trendy in crowders but underneath the shirt it's still the same you. Loads of people never discover this. They get to the end of their lives and still don't realize it doesn't matter what's going on out there or what other people might be thinking of you. You don't have to put on an image for anybody. Your life is in your head. Your responsibility is to walk your own path and tend your own garden. Our technologically advanced societies are screwed because we exchanged our true natures for gadgets, machines, pop culture entertainment, video games, hair color, brand name clothes, and artificial lifestyles sitting in front of screens instead of living close to what we feel within ourselves and close to nature in general. I don't care about trophies or awards. I don't care about money beyond having enough for basic comfort and security as opposed to excessive luxury which is the American dream ideology, get much more money than you could ever possibly need to buy a bunch of meaningless, frivolous stuff that doesn't enhance how you feel inside. Everybody knows deep down that it's wrong to aspire to a lifestyle of material excess while half the world is hungry but this is the ideology of success pounded into us. The mass media runs on selling advertising for the cult of material excess. Very few people are strong enough to see past this to live their own lives. Native people throughout history who lived close to nature always lived by the creed that you take what you need and leave the rest for others. This is the way nature operates. Take what you need and not any more than this. Don't exploit anything. Extreme material excess is wrong. We all intuitively know it's not right to surround yourself with loads of frivolous goods while so many people starve every day and die because they can't get basic medicine. According to UNICEF, 30,000 children die every single day non-stop. Never ending, as they can't get enough food and basic medicines that cost under a buck per dose. I watch some show like MTV's Cribs and I know how disgusting the world is. You got these people over here flaunting their newly found wealth gained by being manufactured pop culture idols while lots of people are dying somewhere because they can't get a dollar's worth of food or medicine. This is why I will always be down on this society I live in. This violates the moral code within yourself that you were born with. If you have any nobility, it's gone as soon as you start looking for happiness through buying frivolous material things you don't need. That's one big reason why the modern Western nations are screwed in the spiritual sense. There's no balance in the way people live. We don't try hard enough to help the bottom rung of the economic ladder. The money spent on hair color and video games could probably solve world hunger and homelessness and buy medicine for a billion people. It's a big mess of disharmony. If the fat cats treated the poor people a little better, we might have less violence than we do now since most acts of aggression come from rage against perceived injustice. 
I'm not defined by what people think of me, my status or position out in the world, what I own, the clothes I wear, what religion I might be a member of, what political party I vote for, what sports team I might cheer for, what country I live in or what I think is cool stuff in the pop culture sense. My life is my thoughts, feelings, and action minute by minute within my being. That's what life really is, how you live within yourself, not some image you or other people manufactured for you from the material world. It's your consciousness and attitude, what you do with it, what kind of action you generate from within yourself for your love of your life. You're accountable to yourself the way you were created not what the world wants you to be. This has destroyed more lives than anything I can think of, people buying into paradigms of life other than who they really are by nature. I blame most of our failures as a free, enlightened society on our formal institutions and the mass media. They brainwash you and everybody around you so in order to free yourself from your society to live by your free spirit, you not only have to reject your institutional and mass media indoctrination, you also have to realize that most of your friends and family are massively brainwashed and make allowances for their limited way of thinking. All you really own is your body, mind, and soul. That's where you live your life, within your own being. The outside world comes in and says we'll give you rank, status and position out in the world. You can earn money and buy a bunch of stuff, even stuff you don't need. Different people will make different amounts of money based on their abilities, inheritance, and luck. We'll give you a game to play called socioeconomic status. Your purpose in life is to climb as high as you can on this illusory ladder we've created so you can compare yourself with other people based on monetary worth and status in the community to determine how much of a winner you are by capitalist standards. The problem with this model of life is that it doesn't address what's in your spirit and character which is why I don't play it because my life is all free spirit bohemian, dancing fool when I'm high. As a self-proclaimed enlightened free spirit, it's all about keeping this essence that is my body, mind, and soul strong, powerful, vital, free and high. I create well-being and euphoria within myself through what I do as opposed to my position or socio-economic status in the outside world.